Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my controller collection series, and today we're going to be going over the Sega Genesis and the Sega Masters. Let's start off this meeting by welcoming you and all of the new viewers, all of the new members out there to this latest meeting of Controller Addicts Anonymous. My name is Mondane. I am the founder and president and one of its chief addicts, I guess is the best term. Um, I realize that I have a problem with collecting controllers and I, uh, I've been been trying my best to stop. Uh, I've reached points where I've gotten the maximum number of players for a system. Um, I, I seem I seem pretty happy with it, but you know, every, every once in a while, a controller wears out and it needs to be replaced, right? I mean, it's 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 nothing bad. I'm just replacing something that's it's not working, right? That's 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 okay. I. Okay, I fell off the wagon. Roll the video. The Genesis Minister is a light gun controller created by Sega for the use for the Sega Genesis video game console. It was released in 1992, and it was designed to be used with games compatible with, you know, light gun controllers, because it's a light gun. The minister connects to the Genesis via a nine pin port with the IR receiver. You can see it on the left hand side right there. Uh, it requires six AA batteries that are actually loaded in the back, back here behind that battery door. The controller also has a built in auto fire function and it was sold with a game called Minister 6 Game Cartridge, which includes six different games, mainly a tech demo for the for the uh, peripheral. The Minister was not popular as, the Minister was not as popular as the Justifier. It was also considered to be less accurate than the Justifier as well, but it was a good alternative for people who wanted something wireless. Now, mine actually have the Minister, the stock that plugs into the back right here. A little hard to do this on camera. And then my sights are actually missing the, the scopes that are on the back. Hopefully I can pick some of those up soon for fairly cheap. But that's it. It, it comes together. It's uh, fairly hefty and stuff. And here's the IR receiver that usually sits on top of the television somewhere. Um, this is actually a true light gun. Um, just the IR receiver transmitter and receiver are built so that this gun can be completely wireless, much like the Super Scope 6. This is the Sega Genesis mouse. It's a peripheral that was created for the Genesis and it was first released in 1991. It's primarily used in games that require precise movement and control, such as point and click adventures and games uh, that are strategy based. Uh, the mouse was also compatible with the Sega CD and the Sega 32X add-on consoles. And I believe it was discontinued in 1996. It's actually got a fairly long cord. Uh, I haven't measured it in a while, so I've forgotten. It, I mean, it's just the standard nine pin adapter. However, uh, it's kind of interesting that it's got the three buttons, A, B, and C, and I think this is mode and then a classic style mouse. This is not an optical read mouse. It is actually a physical roll ball mouse. The Sega Genesis activator is a peripheral device for the Sega Genesis video game console that allows players to control games using body motions. Similar to the Nintendo Power Pad, it was released in 1993 and it was designed to be used with specific sports and fitness themed games. However, it was not widely popular, 
and it was discontinued shortly after its release. It's now really just considered a collector's item, mainly just purely for the novelty of having one. Now I have one in a box. My box is not in great shape. Uh, this is as tall as my camera gets, so you'll have to forgive that. But I do have the instruction booklet and how it controls all kinds of different games. Here is one of the sections. This is the section that actually has the controller cable on it. Uh, and they connect to each other via these pin ports. There's several sections of it. And I even have the required power supply for this thing to work in its little white box. Here's the power supply. I'll go ahead and unravel this just in case. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and unravel this just in case anyone needs this information. Uh, output 9 volt at 500 milliamps. The Sega 3D glasses are an accessory for the Sega Master System, and they were released in 1987. They allowed players to experience 3D visual games that supported the technology. The 3D glasses use an active shutter technology to alternate between left and right eye images to create a 3D effect. The technology is very similar to the virtual reality and 3D movies with glasses allowing players to see depth and distance in the game. The glasses were compatible with a wide range of titles including Zaxxon 3D, Outrun 3D, Maze Hunter 3D, and a few other hand, handful of titles. Although the 3D visuals were impressive for the time, they were limited by the technology of the era and did not offer the same level of immersion as modern virtual reality systems. The Sega 3D glasses were discontinued in the early 90s, but they still remain a popular collector's item. Now, I have my Sega 3D glasses. They're in really good shape. They actually came in the box. My earpieces are not snapped off, which is an amazing feat. Uh, these, this plastic is very delicate. You can even see uh, some spots where even just sitting in the box and not doing anything where the, the, the plastic has stressed already. Uh, it has the Sega brand logo right there. Uses a headphone jack to hook up to the card reader, which is the adapter to have this work with the Sega Master System. This is actually really good 3D for the time, and I really enjoy it. The Sega Master System gamepad is the primary controller for the Sega Master System's uh, video game console, which it was released in 1985. Controller features a directional pad, two buttons labeled one and two. The Master System gamepad is similar in design to the Sega Genesis controller and the Atari 2600 controller a little bit. It's also compatible with the Sega Mark III, which is Japanese version of the Master System. The gamepad was also released in various versions like the Sega Master System 2 controller, which is included with the console and has some small design changes. Now, speaking of small design changes, uh, you'll notice that this version has the cable coming out of the side and this version has the cable coming out of the top. And this one also has a knob so that you can, you know, use a miniature style joystick, but you can unscrew it and just use it as a normal pad as well. It's a very interesting feature. Uh, I don't believe they stuck with this. I think this is the first version of the pad. Let's see if there's anything on the back. Model 3020. Then let's check this one. Model 3020. So even though they are the same model number, they, are, they obviously have differences. Where this one can have the, the stick and the the cable comes out the side. This one cannot have a stick and the cable comes out the top. 
They're both very good controllers and uh, are very serviceable, but with the Master System, you can actually use the Sega Genesis controllers on it as well. And that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and I look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.